everyone. My name is Sonia La Fuente Luciano, as you all know, and together with Irene and Patricia, we are going to present our project titled The Norman Conquest and Subjection of the English Language. What are the implications of the Norman Conquest and the English language? Well, to contextualize our project, we will do a quick historical review of the event that we will analyze. First, however, we could not leave out the language of the West Saxon Kingdom, led by King Alfred of Wessex, why? As it was the English of this part in the last century before the Norman Conquest in 1066, known as Old English. The arrival of the Normans, led by the Duke of the Normandy, who speaks Anglo-Norman French and Scandinavian, seems to be the most important event affecting the linguistic development of the English language, as the language of the Wessex lost its special status after their arrival. The change in the English language is continuous, we all know that. However, three particular features distinguish Middle English from Old English. A more straightforward system of inflection, especially on nouns and adjectives, the increased reliance on word order, and preposition to mark the relationship of words in a sentence, and finally, the increasingly more mixed vocabulary. As I have just mentioned, these historical events were transcendental for the development of the English language. As authors like Laura J. Britton and Leslie K. Arnaud claim, the conquest of England by the Duke of Normandy in 1066 is perhaps the single most important event affecting the linguistic development of English. For all these reasons, Zeph, I will start by giving sample of the implication of words and sound in the English language. Old English had relatively few words from other sources, although there were significant borrowing from Latin of the church. By contrast, Middle English draw heavily on French and Latin, and also on the language of Scandinavian settler. French were culturally dominant, and borrowings came from a wider variety of domain. For example, Parliament, Battle, Arrest, Attorney, Painting, Nephew. It is important to highlight that the most important source of English throughout the history has been Latin. There are four separate periods of borrowing. The first period was the Germanic tribes, the second period occurred in Anglo-Saxon time, the third period was Christian period, and the fourth period was very difficult to determine whether a word was borrowed from Latin or came from French. Vocabularies from the realm of religion, law, scholarship, medicine, science, and literature were often borrowed directly from Latin. What is the consequence of borrowing from Latin and French? Now my colleague Irene will talk about this question. Hello, I'm Irene Lolmo, and as my colleague Sonia had mentioned before, I'm going to talk about the changes in English language after the Norman Conquest. Changes such as vocabulary, spelling, and the vowel system. First of all, it is important to say that French was very influential in English vocabulary. More than 10,000 words came into the English language. French words, which were adopted in English, suffered a great change in sounds because the English is unable to imitate the French accentuation. And that is why there are a great many words now stressed in uh, the final syllable. Also, uh, a lot of prefixes and suffixes were introduced in English, which is the consequence from the borrowing of Latin and French. The spelling change due to the French influence uh, led, for example, the combination HW that changes into WH. Also, there were new letter combinations, for example, the combination PH, like in the word phantom. Um, there were some changes in the vowel quantity, for example, the lengthening before the consonant clusters, or the shortening before the double consonants and consonant clusters, except 
thus that cause lengthening and also the first syllable or trisyllabic words. Finally, the most important change after the Norman conquest was the Great Vowel Shift, which was the single greatest change in the history of the English language. This change was led by William the Conqueror, and this change implies the shifted pronunciation of vowels from a softer to a harder um, sound. But now we will see these changes in more depth. Following to what Irene said, I'm going to talk about the loss of inflection and the process of synthetic to analytic language. The loss of inflection in Middle English is not directly tied to the Norman conquest, as this type of change in the language takes more time. The reason behind it is the Vikings. However, the process was fastened by the Norman conquest. Vikings have a softer ending in their inflection, so Anglo-Saxons were influenced and adopted the intonation of the Vikings. The end of words got very weak, which ultimately led to the loss of inflection. Noun and adjectives. Some changes were final M to N in the dative plural of nouns and adjectives, and in the dative singular of adjectives, inflected with a strong declension. Vowels A, O, U, and E in inflectional endings to indeterminate vowel E. After French influence, the adjectives occupied the postmodifier position. This resulted in the endings which indicated declension to be dropped and exchanged for a sound. For the final S or S, survived to indicate plural for strong masculine declension and the EN for weak. The Anglo Norman spread the S, which finally remained on the, as the indicator of plural. Birds. In Middle English, the most important change is the loss of a strong conjugation. Because of the Norman conquest, there was a loss of native words, which helped the growth of weak verbs, and the strong verbs that survived were also changed due to analogy to weak inflection over time. Negation was expressed by the negator ne, which after weakening, changed to not to reinforce negation. Word order became increasingly fixed, and it is directly related to semantic infraction and syntactic relations of nouns, the absence of passive and articles, and the disparity between marked and unmarked sentences is all a result of the language becoming less inflected and needing word order to get the lost information. Word order is similar to modern English, but it is less rigid. The default would be subject, verb, and object. The verb can be found at the end of sentences, and helping verb and main verb may be split by the object and even the sentence. Middle English syntax. With the loss of inflection, syntactic and semantic relations on words are now ambiguous. To fix this lack of information, the possible patterns of words order are reduced making the language more analytic. This is not a direct result of the Norman conquest. However, it helped because it removed the authority of a standard variety, so grammatical changes could occur more freely now. Synthetic to analytic language. Synthetic languages are semantic oriented. We can see that in Old, Old English, syntactic relations are expressed by inflection. Middle English is syntactic oriented, which it means it's analytic. It uses grammatical words or particles instead of inflection. The previously mentioned phonetic changes led to a loss of inflection and the loss of grammatical gender, which led to a more fixed word order and an increase in preposition, conjunctions and definite articles. Overall, the historical events that took place is relevant to the development of the English language. Modern English wouldn't be what it is today if it wasn't for the influence brought by the Normans. Moreover, Middle English is not just a bridge between Old English and Modern English, but a period of growth, influences, and experimentation, which ultimately led to a rich vocabularies, fixed and analytic language. As we have learned, language is a constant change. As the ancient Greek Heraclitus in the 6th century claimed, everything rolls on, nothing stays still. However, 1066 is a milestone in the history of the English language and should not be seared in the human memory. One English writer, Paul Kings North, claimed, I do think that the legacy of the Norman conquest is still strong in Britain. Our hereditary monarchy, our established church, 
our ancient country structure, though hollowed out in many ways, are a direct result of what happened in 1066. We do hope that you have enjoyed our short video and we are really uh, thankful for your attention.